If you live on the east coast of Australia, it may feel like the rain just hasn't stopped falling all year. And you'd be right. The Bureau of Meteorology has been collecting rain data every day in Sydney since 1858. And in all those 164 years, it has never been this wet. Not even close. Sydney's average rainfall is about 1.2 metres, about this high. The official rain gauge at Observatory Hill had collected by early October more than 2.2 metres. We not only broke the record, we annihilated it. What sets this year apart is we passed 2,000 millimetres for only the fifth time on record while still in winter. And we passed the all-time 1950 record with nearly three months remaining in the year. So what caused all this rain? And when is it going to end? To put Sydney soaking into a global perspective, London, infamous for its gloomy weather, by mid-spring had only received around 300 millimetres of rain in 2022, less than 14% of Sydney's rain. The city has seen even more rain than humid tropical cities like Bangkok and Jakarta would normally receive in a year. Before we analyse why so much rain fell, let's first talk about what 2,000 millimetres of rain actually looks like. But why are we talking about height when rain is a liquid and would normally be measured in volume? Every one millimetre of rain is equivalent to one litre of water falling on one square metre. So exactly how much water has fallen from the sky? Considering Sydney is one of the largest cities in the world by area, it's the equivalent of more than 3 million Olympic-sized swimming pools, or 17 Sydney harbours. That's an almost incomprehensible amount of rain to fall on a city which only years ago was running out of water and under severe water restrictions. So we have to remember that these cycles that we are in right now, which is a flood, it will change to a cycle of drought and it will be a more intense or a more extreme drought than what we have seen in the past. Back to the rain though, and with so much falling, it was inevitable New South Wales would see some of the worst flooding on record. Lismore, for example. The Insurance Council of Australia has estimated the floods across southeast Queensland and northern New South Wales was the costliest flood disaster in Australia's history at $4.3 billion. I've been through the 54, 74, 89, Nothing like this. And after three decades without a major flood, a two-year drenching triggered not one, but four major floods along the Hawkesbury Nepean River. We just got it, everything cleaned up and back to normal. Then we got hit with another one in July. We've been wearing gumboots for like nine months. Another factor which intensified the frequency and severity of flooding in Sydney and New South Wales was not the water falling from the sky, but the water under the ground. We started this year with a wet head start. 2021 was the state's sixth wettest year on record, and it not only replenished our dams, it saturated the ground. By the time 2022 came around, the soil could not absorb any further rainfall. It was already sodden. So what's happening to all this excess water? If it's falling over metropolitan Sydney, it basically all just runs out to sea. Most of the rain that falls west or south of Sydney will eventually find its way into the Warragamba Dam. But if the dam is full, it will spill over the top and flow into the Nepean River, which then flows into the Hawkesbury River. And if there's too much water, that can cause a flood. Not everyone in Sydney was impacted by the recent floods. But most of the five million residents have had to contend with problems caused by the damp, humid conditions. It's a simple fact that when it's wet we have a lot of mould. Mould will disturb the barriers of uh, nose, chest and skin, leave people open to new allergies and leave people open to having other problems reactivated. Roads and infrastructure also suffered damage during all that rain. The NRMA reported the number of call-outs due to tyre damage in New South Wales during July and August was almost double that of the previous year. So where has all this rain come from? Obvious answer, it fell from the sky. But why was there so much water or so much cloud above New South Wales in 2022? Clouds form when evaporated water condenses back to a liquid and the largest body of water on Earth is the Pacific Ocean. Studying a map of sea surface temperatures across the Pacific, we can see an obvious and anomalous pattern. 
Waters across the equatorial Pacific are colder than normal. Waters off the northern and eastern coast of Australia are warmer than normal. This is called a La Nina weather pattern, and it's the third year in a row of the cool phase of the Pacific. Only the third triple La Nina in 150 years. While La Nina has historically increased rainfall through northern and eastern Australia, that alone does not explain why 2022 produced so much rain across New South Wales. However, this triple dip La Nina has been unusual because typically each individual phase breaks down in late summer or early autumn. But the second of the triplet did not break down until May this year. And this dragged La Nina through Sydney's wetter season, which is autumn. We normally see them start to break down pretty much as soon as summer's through. We start to see those ocean temperatures return back to, back to normal and the decoupling of that sort of atmospheric condition. So it was very rare to see it push that far through the year. And as mentioned, that does generally lead to a much more wetter conditions. But that doesn't explain the full extent of the rainfall. The other major ocean near Australia is the Indian, which has also entered a wet phase called a negative Indian Ocean dipole. Just like La Nina, negative IODs have a history of boosting rainfall across Australia, and when occurring simultaneously with La Nina, have led to some of Australia's wettest years on record. Again, this explains some of the rain, but not as much as we have seen. The third body of water which surrounds Australia, the Southern Ocean, also impacts our weather. But it's not the temperature which matters here, but the wind. There is a permanent belt of westerly winds which circumnavigates Antarctica due to the Earth's daily rotation on its axis. The belt contracts and expands, and this oscillation is called the Southern Annular Mode, or SAM. When the band of westerly winds contracts to the South Pole, we call this a positive SAM. And when they expand north, that's known as a negative SAM. 2022 has been dominated by a contraction or a positive SAM, which means there has been a lack of westerly winds blowing across the latitudes of southern Australia. For eastern facing coasts, like the New South Wales coast, a westerly airstream blows offshore, coming from Australia's inland deserts. Sydney rarely receives rain when the wind is from the west. And there lies one of the key solutions to this puzzle. The answer really is blowing in the wind. The prevailing wind in Sydney this year was an easterly rather than a westerly. And this is critical. Sydney has had an easterly wind deviation of 3.8 kilometres per hour, which means the wind has blown harder from the east. And to the east of Sydney is the Tasman Sea. It is a relatively warm sea and it produces a lot of evaporation. And that means more moisture and rain for us. So while La Nina, negative IOD, positive SAM all played a role, the key ingredient was the wind. Without the stronger easterly winds, it just would have been another wetter than average year, but definitely not a record. It's not just Sydney that has been breaking weather records. There have been historic floods in Pakistan, unprecedented heat and drought in Europe and the United States. We had record floods in Africa, Mozambique, Chile, Argentina, and before that in Argentina, extreme bushfires. So we've had extreme weather on every southern continent. It's undeniable that climate change played a role in these global events. We are prepared for the way the climate used to be. We are not prepared for the new reality we are living in. For every one degree of warming, the atmosphere can hold an extra 7% of moisture. Since 1900, Australia's climate has warmed by around 1.5 degrees, so roughly a 10% higher capacity for moisture. More moisture in the air means the potential for more rain falling from the sky in extreme events. Climate scientists around the world have found while rain may be increasing or decreasing depending on location and season, there is a near universal increase in short duration heavy rainfall events. It's hard to know how much climate change has impacted any of these events, but overall climate change does mean we have a warmer atmosphere, we have a lot more water vapour that can be held in the atmosphere as well. So what we do know is it generally means that when we're going to see these heavy rainfall events, we're going to see more rainfall than we normally would. So to answer the question I've been asked more than any other this year is when will this rain end? Of the five drivers of our record wet year, Four of them 
can be predicted with some skill a few months ahead of time. And all four are in a state which would increase rainfall across New South Wales, just like earlier this year. Let's map it out. The first driver which is likely to return to normal is the negative IOD, which should break down by around Christmas. La Nina normally breaks down in the late summer or autumn, while the wind oscillation, or SAM in the Southern Ocean, has shown a recent trend to remain positive right through the summer and autumn. Climate change is the fourth predictable influence, which is clearly an ever-growing background presence. Considering all the factors which impact our weather, the most likely scenario is our rainfall patterns return to some form of normality around autumn 2023. So, another wet summer with the perfect recipe for ongoing flooding. We can only hope that the severity does not reach those record levels we saw across the state earlier this year.